I've edited thousands of photos in Luminar Neo, but the truth is I keep coming back to the same tools again and again and again. In this video, I'm going to show you the tools behind all my best edits over the years, and we're going to start that right now. Okay, friends, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. I'm in Luminar Neo, and the first tool that we're talking about is HDR Merge, and that is because it's amazing. It's so powerful, so fantastic, so useful, whether it's a bracketed set of images like I have here or a single exposure. It works all the time. I'm a huge fan and you get results that really, really look good. I'm going to start by dragging this over to the HDR merge window. I've ticked all the appropriate boxes. I'm going to go ahead and merge, build this into a combined HDR merged file and keep editing. Okay, and here's my combined file. Now, this is a TIFF file. It's no longer a RAW file. It took three RAW files, merged them into a TIFF, which is the file format output from HDR Merge. It's sitting right here, and as you can see, it's already a little bit better distribution of light, which is what I love about HDR. We're going to jump into the editing and continue this journey. Now, the first thing I need to do is erase some tripods and cameras that are over here. Let me take care of that, and we'll get going. Okay, I've got that cleaned up, and while I wasn't really planning to talk about Erase in this video as one of my most used tools or a secret tool behind all my best edits, I use it all the time. I mean, let's be honest, the power line removal, the automatic dust spot removal, it's pretty amazing. So I do love it, even though it wasn't really on the list. Uh, but after HDR Merge, the next tool I want to talk about is Develop. Now, I recommend shooting in RAW, which I did shoot in RAW for this. However, as I said earlier, when you merge RAW files into an HDR, it becomes a TIFF file. So it's going to say Develop here. I recommend always shooting in raw, richer data that you can work with gives you more leeway in editing. But the key thing that I love about develop is you have all these various sections where you can go in and make major, massive, frankly, adjustments to your photos. Now, in this case, I don't really need to make as much as I normally would simply because it's an HDR. The lights already been balanced pretty well. I just want to make some minor adjustments. I do want to pull the highlights down from the sky out behind the gentleman standing there. Uh, which was, uh, this was an ice cave on one of the Luminar tours in Iceland. And so, as is the case, interior architecture, if you want to call it, this is natural architecture, but it's kind of the same idea. Brighter light outside, darker or less light inside. You really need to bracket these situations. They just give you more options for your editing later. And uh, now I've got a little bit better looking photo. So before and after. Now, I love all the different capabilities here from the noise reduction, the sharpness, the optics, transform, of course, color, curves, blacks and whites, all that stuff. Even this section up here with auto adjust, or if you have a raw file, you can use color profiles. But I'm not using any of that stuff here. I'm just doing some basic stuff. Regardless, develop or develop raw, incredibly important. It's a tool that I use all the time. And in fact, I start with develop raw when I'm editing a raw file. Now, having said that, the next tool I want to talk about is Super Contrast. I use it all the time. absolutely love this tool. And the reason why is because it gives me an amazing amount of control over the light in an image. Well, if you think about editing these, uh, these photographs, you're essentially moving light around all the time. And there's no better way to do it than with Super Contrast. So I'm a big fan. And what I normally do is I come in and I just move each of the individual sections, the uh, contrast slider, and then I come back and play with the balance until I get it looking the way I want it to look. And so that's really what I'm doing here. And I'm just kind of moving these sliders into position as I look at my notes, because I can never remember all the different moves that I make. But if you want to look at the before and after, if you look at the before, quite a bit darker, and after, quite a bit lighter without overdoing it, because I do want to maintain contrast. And I want that difference, which is what contrast is, the difference between the bright and the dark spots. I want that contrast where it's brighter behind him and darker inside but I need to make some adjustments in order to make it look more real and more kind of uh, exciting, right? I want this photo to really jump off the page. So before and after, and that's super contrast. Now, before I go any further, the other thing I do all the time is I use develop again and again and again. Now, I'm not going to use it a ton on this photo, but I am going to get a brush mask, which is another tool I use all the time. If you're not familiar with masking, I highly recommend that you learn masking. I have a masking masterclass for Luminar. I have the link below if you want to check that out. All I'm going to do is come in here with this uh, brush and highlight this ice because I love all this ice that's chipped here. And by the way, if you're wondering why there's a bunch of chipped ice on the floor, around this corner, there's a staircase that was carved or chipped out of ice. My guess is all these chips are what made the uh, staircase. So. I've brushed that and I want to brighten it. So all I'm going to do is lift the exposure 
And I'm going to do like mid-30s, something like that, and maybe bring the whites up a little bit as well. All I'm trying to do is draw a little bit of focus to that area. Let me show you what it did. Before, quite a bit darker, right? Doesn't look quite as nice. And after, now you can see it. It stands out a little bit more, and it also helps anchor that foreground. I like that quite a bit. I think it's a useful line that kind of leads you to the, the view of this gentleman who's facing off in the distance. I just think that all works. And masking with develop, one of the most critical things you can do, I think, in any, uh, in any edit because you have all these tools and you can make all kinds of adjustments to whatever you mask in. So I actually may go a tiny bit brighter and maybe a tiny bit more on the white. I think that looks good. I don't want to overdo it, but that's it for develop. And now I want, to, I want to jump into Structure AI. This is another tool I use all the time. And the great thing about Structure AI is it works both positively and negatively. If you've been here before, you know I use it all the time. And I use it positively and negatively in just about every photo, which is why this tool is making an appearance in this video. I'm going to start by adding some positive structure. And I'm going to go to about 50. Now, you might think that's a little high, but... I want to tell you that like when you're standing inside an ice cave that's carved out by water like this, it's got all these shapes and uh, patterns and it just looks really cool and it's kind of crunchy. And that's a term I like to use for structure AI. It's nice at adding some crunch to an image. So if you look at the before and the after, I think that looks pretty awesome before and after. However, there's one thing I wanted you to, uh, to be aware of, and that is it does brighten the photo a little bit. And my preference is to add structure AI with the masking tool. This is my next favorite tool. And even though I'm inside Structure AI, uh, which is one of the favorite tools making this list, Luminosity Masking is another favorite tool that's going to make this list. And what I want to do with it is essentially get out of those highlights. Because if you look at the sky, brighter and now darker, it doesn't look that good with the structure. So I'm actually going to pull the Luminosity Mask and just remove it from the sky and that's perfect, my friends. That's what's so great about luminosity masks. If you need a video about it, leave a comment down below and let me know. But what I want to tell you is because it allows you to separate the different uh, tonal areas within an image, you can take uh, a filter or tool like structure and apply it or remove it from certain areas. And it does an incredibly good job of that. I often come in and do some uh, blending like that. I think I'm not going to do it on this photo. And I'm actually going to, yeah, I think I'm just going to leave it like that. So I'm missing a couple of spots here, but let me show you a trick. You can go back from Luminosity Mask, back up to the masking menu, grab a brush, and then you can come over here and just paint over those brighter spots. If you'd like to, you don't have to, but you can stack masks. Uh, you're not really going to be able to notice it so much in this video, but I wanted to point it out as a cool trick because it's super useful and super powerful to be able to stack those masks to get even better. Control. So now Structure AI is applying positively all over the rock, not on the sky at all, before and after. Now, here's another thing you could do uh, is if you wanted to use the opposite of this to apply negative structure, you can just go into the masking menu, come down here and click copy, and then you can close Structure AI, open it again, click masking, mask actions, and paste. And if I show you, I have the exact same mask. Well, this time I want to do negative structure, so I'm going to click invert. Guess what? I've just isolated the sky. It took, what, three seconds? It would take one if I wasn't sitting here yapping. Uh, but now the mask is applying just to the sky, and I want to do what I've talked about earlier, which is negative structure. And that's just smoothing it out. Honestly, the sky is such a small part of this photo, and there's not enough cloud cover in it, not enough kind of structure, if you will, in the sky to really be able to see the smoothing. But, you know, you go really smooth like that, and you can see that a little bit better. The point is not really that this photo needs it, because it doesn't. The point is, take advantage of these capabilities. Copy mask, apply it to the same tool, invert it, do the reverse, that sort of thing. You have so much power and control. This, uh, these, uh, these kind of capabilities just work really, really well. Okay, now, the next tool I want to talk about is Accent AI. I love this tool. I use it all the time, and I... Depending on the photo, I'll apply it to 30 or 40 sometimes. I don't always recommend doing that, but it's a little too much here. But what I want to do is actually tone that down a little bit. I'm going to leave it at about 40. But what I want to do is I'm going to use a luminosity mask, and I'm going to come in. And this time, I'm going to take it out of the shadows, but not entirely. So 
I already copied that other mask. I could invert it here, but I'm actually going to come in and just recreate it because what I want to do is I want to get some of that shadow, but I really want that sky, and I want to blend or kind of um, smooth out the edge of that mask and uh, create a little bit of a look like this. So I want it to apply on some of the shadow, all of the sky, all the highlights, all the midtones, but kind of fade and gradually dissipate into the shadows. So I want it to look something like that. That's why I didn't copy and paste the other mask because it's not just a complete inverse of my structure mask. So there it is. And now that I've got Accent AI, it applies really nicely to the sky and to some of those areas. So before and after gives me a nice little pop without overdoing it. And then, you know, once you have your mask dialed in, you can come back and adjust up or down the amount of the slider. So you don't have to do mask first and then slider or slider first and then mask they both work it doesn't matter i do a little bit of both depending on what it is i'm experimenting with the point is accent ai absolutely great tool i use it in all my favorite photos and luminosity mask once again making an appearance because they are the mask that i use the most and that i love the most okay now there's a whole lot of other tools that you can see i've got up here in my favorites i'm not going to use them all and these are my favorites these are the tools that i use the most but they're not the tools that I use every time. There's one more tool that I use just about every time, and that's Color Harmony. There is really no better tool in Luminar for color grading your image, and that's something I like to do at the end of my edit. So I wanna come in, I wanna add a little bit of brilliance, so maybe like a 10 or 11, and I'm gonna go into the uh, split color warmth, and I'm gonna add about a 10 to the warmth as well. So what I'm doing here is popping a little bit of this color. So before and after the warm color is getting a little bit richer, but there's so much blue, it's not gonna dominate. And while I'm on the blue, I'm gonna go into shadows here in color balance. I'm gonna add just a smidge, like a two or three. So I think a two looks good. All I'm doing is taking the blue and adding a little bit more of that, but only in the shadows. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go into the highlights and I'm gonna take these reds. And I'm gonna go to about like an 18 or 19. All I'm doing is warming up the reds, or excuse me, adding red, which is warming up the highlights. And so what I'm doing here is, if you can tell, I've talked about this in other videos, and that is I'm cooling off the shadows and I'm warming off uh, up the highlights. It's essentially like split toning, which you can do in the toning tool, which is also one of my favorites. But I chose Color Harmony for this because I wanted the brilliance and I wanted the split color warmth. But what I'm doing is warming up the highlights, cooling off the shadows, and I'm creating that color tension or that color contrast to create a greater difference between them and to create some of that so again, color contrast or color conflict. And that tension, I think, creates a little bit more interesting photo. So before, you can see the, the warmer tones especially are a little bit more muted. So before and after, the blues are a little bit richer, a little bit deeper, and a little bit more saturated. But the warm colors really pop off the screen. The warmth in the clouds gets better, and the warmth of that orange jersey that he's wearing, and I'm so grateful that he wore that, gets to pop a bit more as well. And that's how you take a photo it started out like that, and that's a blended HDR, three exposure, which you saw, turned into that, and that's using all my favorite tools, Structure, Accent AI, Color Harmony, Develop, different masking tools. There's plenty of other tools that I love to use and I use a lot in Luminar. These are the ones that I keep coming back to again and again and again on all my favorite edits. Hopefully this gives you some ideas. If you haven't yet subscribed to my newsletter, I've got a 27-page ebook it's for free for all my newsletter subscribers that will give you lots of tips, tricks, and pro insights into how to use Luminar Neo to get the best possible results. Check it out at the link below. I'll be back soon with more videos. Thanks for hanging out, my friends. I'll see you soon. Until next time, adios.